Welcome back everyone, time to do a late 2020 review, my very first late 2020 review, and I'm so happy to do it of the iPhone 6. I'm pretty sure within the last couple of years that I've been doing these type of reviews for these phones, the iPhone 6 has been one of the first iPhones that I tested. And what I can tell you is, is that first of all, I am still pretty sure the iPhone 6 is one of the most popular phones out there. And funny enough, I think still my second most popular video and my most popular technology video I've ever done was about the iPhone 6, which is so funny. I have so much love about this phone. I could marry this phone today if it were legal. And honestly, I owe a lot to this specific device. And the very first iPhone that I ever used as a daily iPhone instead of just using it as a side iPhone was an iPhone 6 Plus. So not this iPhone, but the bigger brother to this one. Now what I can tell you is, and this is pretty much apparent, I would not recommend anybody going out of their way to pick up an iPhone 6 to use as a daily phone. I just think that's kind of like committing fraud activity to yourself. Like I just feel like if you just go buy an iPhone 6S, that is probably, or an iPhone SE, those are probably the two iPhones that I would recommend the least. Like if you have no money at all and you're just trying to get an iPhone, I would not go any lower than those two phones. And there have been some developments with the iPhone 6. I think the most important big deal about the iPhone 6 that has happened is that it's pretty much outdated with software as of right now, which is surprising because last year, the last time I made a video about this was I think mid 2020. And even then I was like, bro, like this phone is killing it because of the software updates. And even now, like it's still kind of the case, but you have to keep in mind that with the iPhone 6, it's not getting any more software updates, which is kind of unfortunate because I think this phone probably could have handled it. You know, I think this phone could have handled iOS 13 to be completely honest with you, but iOS 12 was a pretty good spot to end on this phone. And I think that's probably the biggest, you know, news outlet thing that's happened since then. With iOS 14, we haven't really gotten any new, you know, iOS 12 updates yet. I'm not saying it can't happen, but I'll probably say that without a doubt, the iPhone 6 is probably unsupported with software. So software wise, that's probably the biggest change you know honestly however the hardware is one of the most fascinating things about this device because when you look at this visually it doesn't really look too much different from the front than the brand new iPhone SE 2020 that just came out earlier this year and that is something that's very interesting because this iPhone 6 was pretty much the biggest design change at that time besides the iPhone 4 and 4s and this was the biggest design change we had the bigger screen and everything and Apple is still manufacturing these exact same parts the exact same screen and everything on this specific phone which is so crazy we have all these phones with like the lowest amount of bezels and hole punch displays and everything but the iphone 6 you know was the one that originated the design of the se2 pretty much you know is still in the same style with it which is really impressive so the display i think is not the best display it's not even that great of a display anymore but it's an okay display which i think it's one of its biggest assets this phone came out in 2014, dude. That was six years ago. And it's crazy that this phone is still even being talked about at all. So for sure, the iPhone 6 has a lot of love in my heart, and I still like it to this day. It has the lightning port on the bottom as well as the headphone jack, which is really cool. And on the back, a single camera setup. And I'll just go ahead and hit it on the camera right now, dude. This camera setup, you know, it's a single 8 megapixel sensor. And it's 1080p. It's not a that you know what i don't know how to say this without hurting people's feelings it's not a great camera okay it's not a great camera it's not a good camera but it's a good enough camera you know if you need to go take photos you know by all means go for it i've actually seen some people make some really decent videos from this camera it only can shoot 1080p at 60 frames and i don't even think it can shoot 60 frames maybe it can i don't know i thought it topped out at 30 frames but whether it's 60 or 30 i still think this camera setup is good enough for a single camera setup However, if I had to use it as an everyday camera, I probably wouldn't like it too much. Now, me personally, I'm not really using that back camera too much if I'm being honest, unless I'm doing a camera comparison or like I'm out on like a hike and I want to take a picture of the beautiful sunset that nobody cares about. Like I'll go ahead and do something like that, but I'm not really shooting like my videos on this camera or on my phone camera. I'm usually shooting it on a, you know, DSLR, but that front camera is the thing that I use the most. And the front camera on this is a 1.2 megapixel sensor and you can do 720p videos on it. But other than that, like it's not really that great of a sensor on the front. I think the front camera is worse than the back camera in terms of, you know, comparing it to today's cameras. And I think that's probably the biggest disadvantage of this specific phone would definitely be the camera setup. I don't think it's a horrible camera like I stated, but I think in this day and age, you will probably require a better front-facing camera than a back camera. If this phone didn't have a back camera, obviously I would have paid it, but 
If it had a really, really good front-facing camera, I think that would be totally different in my opinion. I think that might have been the dumbest analogy I ever made. But regardless, I mean, this camera is good enough. It'll get the job done. But for the front camera, I don't really think it's that great, to be honest. But I think for this thing, camera modules and everything to still be working is pretty impressive in my book. So in terms of the camera setup, that pretty much covers it up. And in terms of the performance side of things, this thing has the Apple A8 chip, a dual-core CPU, and one gig of RAM. And I think this is probably the biggest disadvantage and it, you know, I've said that like three times. Software is probably the biggest disadvantage, but the performance is a solid like second option. And when it comes down to the performance side of things, I, I really don't think it's the best even 2014 phone that has held up so far. I think this phone is like a solid, you know, 5 out of 10 in performance. I think the biggest asset of it is its smoothness factor. I think the fact that this phone is as smooth as it is, is definitely one of my favorite things about it. And on top of that, I don't really think this phone is a bad performing phone. I think when I compare it to like the Galaxy S4 or I think the LG G2 or G3 came out the same year as this device. I think these are kind of in the same ballpark, but I think the iPhone 6 brings that smoothness factor. I just think when it comes down to like the playability of certain things and I think even some games, I think sometimes they do perform a little bit better on the Android side of things if they're supported. That's the biggest disadvantage. Some games aren't even supported anymore on the Android side. On iOS with the iPhone 6, at least all these games are supported. And that's one thing that's really fascinating. I don't know how much longer that's going to be. Maybe, you know, next year iOS 12 apps are going to start going away. We've seen this before with iOS 9, iOS 10, and I think iOS 11, the same thing. And performance wise, like I stated, I think it's good enough. I think just like the camera, if you're trying to go day to day, you'll probably be okay if you're just trying to, you know, do iMessages and phone calls and FaceTimes and stuff like that. I think you'll probably be better off than not. But I think the biggest problems probably come in the form of playing heavy your intensive games when you're trying to play you know fortnite on your iphone 6 which is not even supported if you're trying to play you know like real racing 3 and like super high graphical games you'll probably run into problems which is okay you know this game, this phone is not meant to last forever but that is definitely one thing to keep in mind i will say though for a 2014 device i think it handles everything perfectly fine like i think it's a really really good performing device for the most part of my opinion for a 2014 iphone but i just personally wouldn't use it anymore and and the performance side of things would definitely not be something that i would recommend at the end of the day so in terms of performance that pretty much covers it up and in terms of the battery life you know this thing has a 1810 million power battery and in this case too i mean i don't think it's that great it's a very very average on top and it's probably even below average and that's saying if it had a hundred percent million power in it chances are if you have an iphone 6 or if you owned one for a while or even if you're buying one brand new or even if you're buying one used the battery life inside of it is really really you know proponent to the battery health that you have inside of it and if it's at like 60 percent battery health or 70 or 80 percent chances are that battery life is not going to be you know lasting you that long even if it had a hundred percent it still wouldn't be that great in my opinion so that really pretty much covers with the battery aspect too and to kind of sum up this whole entire video and to answer the question, is the iPhone 6 still worth it in 2020? Obviously, you know, even in later 2020, it's definitely not worth it. The only asset of this would definitely be like if you can find one for like $30 and you have to have a side phone for some reason, then it makes, and then it's like a no brainer. Like if you're never going to use it, then it's fine. If you're currently using it though, I would 100% wait until the new iPhones come out. Once the new iPhones come out, I would recommend buying those or buying the iPhone 11 series or even buying an iPhone 6s. Those will definitely get you a better experience overall than having to go and use your iPhone 6 and then just upgrade right now to the 11 and 11 Pro for full price when the new iPhones are about to come out and you can get the last gen for much cheaper than the new gen. So I definitely say, you know, for that aspect, you know, that's fine. If you're currently looking for a new iPhone and you have your iSEF for an iPhone 6, that might mean that your budget is super low or the availability in your country or your you know city or whatever. Maybe iPhone 6 is all you have and that's all you can see for your budget but i would also tell those people who are in that situation to wait save some money don't save money whatever but just wait until you can find an iphone success or iphone se for that price throughout my years of research on these iphones and especially the used prices aspect i've always found that an iphone se is around the same exact price sometimes cheaper than an iphone 6 
a lot of people look at the sizes and they're like, oh, like the iPhone 6 has to be more expensive because it's a bigger size. That is not the case at all. The iPhone SE is a far superior phone than the iPhone 6. And I would highly recommend anybody who, who has an iPhone 6 or is looking for an iPhone 6 to save some money or wait until you get an iPhone SE. That would probably be my better way to go. The iPhone 6 is a great phone. It was a great phone, but I just don't think it's worth it to pick up anymore. And if you do find one that's less than $30, then go buy homies, go for it. But I wouldn't recommend anybody using an iPhone 6 as a daily phone anymore so that really pretty much covers it up if you guys have any other questions or anything let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that means so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel more importantly that everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then